What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're talking chili and not just any chili. We're talking one of the best chilies you will ever put in your mouth. And not only that, it's going to be one of the healthiest chilies you've ever had as well. So if that sounds good to you, it really sounds good to me. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into it. All right, guys, before we do any cooking, as always, I want to go over our ingredients briefly, just so we have an idea of what we're working with. And I will tell you before I start, the spices and the seasoning mixture that is not here right now i'm going to go over that a little bit later as we get into the cooking process and if you need a written version of that it'll be in the description below but with what we have in front of us um, most importantly our protein that we need to talk about so when you think chili most of you including myself is probably thinking beef um, the problem with beef and if i'm trying to make something that's a little bit healthier because this is my meal prep for the week beef anything below or anything above, I should say, um, an 80-20 mix is going to be dry, it's going to be not pleasant to eat, and I just don't want that. Even if it is my meal prep, I still want to enjoy it. So I'm actually going with ground turkey today, and the reason for that is this is 93.7 turkey, and this I've worked with 93.7 turkey for years now. For whatever reason, 93.7 turkey compared to 93.7 beef, turkey is moist, has way more flavor, gets a better sear on it, and is just overall more enjoyable to eat. So we're gonna stick with turkey. If you don't care about the health aspect of this, go with like a 75-25 or an 80-20 type of ground beef. You'll have plenty of flavor and it'll be delicious, but anything higher than 80-20, I would probably stay away from because it's just not very good. And then after that, we're gonna go in with one large jalapeno, we'll dice this, de-seed it, and get that into the pan to saute it. Two bell peppers, I went with yellow. The color doesn't matter, use whatever you want. I just wanted a little bit of variety with the color today. Then one can of dark red kidney beans, one can of black beans. You can kind of use your preference here. If you hate beans, leave them out, double your meat is what I would do. Um, but I just, two different kinds of beans just for a little texture variety. Then this is one of the other kind of unorthodox ingredients. This is pumpkin puree, 100% pumpkin puree, and quite a bit of it. The reason for this is it's going to make the chili creamy. It's gonna give it a little bit of that fall flavor that it's that time of year, that's what I'm looking for. Um, but it's also extremely healthy for you, so why not? Then we have diced tomatoes. Um, with this, I may drain off the liquid, I may not. I'm still debating on that. I'll let you know once we get into the cooking process. But 28 ounce can of tomatoes. And then our broth or stock. So again, typically with chili, you're gonna use some type of beef stock or broth. This is chicken bone broth. And the reason for that is the protein content. For whatever reason, beef bone broth that I can find in the store doesn't really have a lot of protein. And again, I'm worried about eating healthy, this is my meal prep. So one cup of this has nine grams of protein. One cup of the beef bone broth that I found in the store had two grams of protein. So I'm gonna go with this, but I want that beefy flavor because it's chili and I need a little bit more oomph. So to combat only using chicken stock, we're gonna use Better Than Bouillon um, beef base. And we'll probably put a couple of tablespoons of this in as we're making our, our liquid part of this dish and that'll help with getting a little bit of that beefier taste. And then to give us some of that smokiness and that kind of southern chili flavor, I have a whole can of chipotles in adobo. Um, it's gonna add a lot of smokiness, a lot of heat, but I'm gonna go in with the whole can just because I need something a little bit heavier and darker to kind of combat the lightness that I have with all the other ingredients. So I'm gonna try a whole can of this and then with on building on that, we have mole paste. So this was not what I intended on using today. I intended on buying dried chilies, roasting them in the oven to activate their flavor a little bit, and then putting them with our stock, pureeing that and forming like kind of a, a chili paste type of thing. The store did not have any dried peppers and I was not going to let all these ingredients go to waste, waiting for them to come from Amazon or something like that. So this is kind of our next best thing. Mole paste, this one is La Costeña, and it is made with ancho chili peppers, cacao, pasilla chili peppers, and mora chili peppers. So those are pretty much the same ingredients I would have used if I had the actual dried peppers, but I don't, so this is next best thing. 
Um, speaking of which, I'm gonna give this a taste a little bit later because I don't actually know what it tastes like. I've never cooked with it before, so I kind of want to get an idea of what it tastes like before I start putting it into anything. And then two other ingredients, the apple cider vinegar. This is gonna kind of happen later in the cooking process to add some acidity if we need it. And then this one is also maybe a little unorthodox. This is 70% cocoa um, dark chocolate. So cocoa and peppers, best friends. When you cook with them together, you get such a nice savory combination. And that's kind of what I'm shooting for here. Uh, this is, again, going to happen towards the end of the cooking process. We're only going to use one square of this because we don't want to overdo it. I don't want the dish to taste like chocolate. I just kind of want that creaminess and savoriness that it's going to provide. So we'll go in with one square towards the end to just kind of finish things up. And then last but not least, I don't have a picture here, but I do have a red onion as well that we're going to use and dice that up to go with the other veggies. Um, and that's about it. The spices I'll get into in a minute, but let's get ready to cook. To any folks who frequently use this product, please let me know how the... Mm, I'm supposed to open that, because what the hell? <laughs> All right, anyway, let's taste it. Oh, it's really thick. I guess I kind of figured it would be. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's interesting. It's smoky. It's very smoky. Not overly spicy. It's a very nice balance. I like this. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. First thing we got to do is make the liquid base of our chili. So go in with your two and a half cups of bone broth, then all of your chipotle peppers and adobo, followed by your entire 28 ounce can of pumpkin puree. And then a good two tablespoons of better than bouillon beef base, probably about two tablespoons of the mole, and then five garlic cloves. Get your top on your blender or food processor and combined. Give it a taste. Ooh. Next thing you gotta do is preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And then obviously we have to stop to give Jackson a good little treat of pumpkin. You will need something that is oven safe. I'm using this big ceramic crock pot. Technically you can do this on the stove, but doing it in the oven is so much easier and less labor intensive. Turn your heat onto high, get some oil in the pan, and throw your turkey down. We're going to fully cook our turkey before we add anything else in. So we're not really going for a good sear on it, we just want to make sure it's fully cooked through. Once the turkey's looking just about done, you're going to make a little hole in the center of your pot and push the turkey out to the sides. And we're gonna go in with our spice mix, which consists of two tablespoons of paprika, two tablespoons of smoked paprika, and then two tablespoons of cumin. Let that toast for just a little bit before it gets stuck to the pan. Mix that to combine with your turkey. And then once again, after it's combined and everything's smelling nice and fragrant, we're going to make a little hole in the center of our pot and give some room for our veggies. Go down with all of our peppers, jalapenos, and onion, and then give everything a stir to combine. At this point, things were starting to get a little sticky on the bottom of the pan, and that's totally fine. That's given us some flavor. That's okay. But we are going to need to deglaze that in order to kind of make sure nothing else gets stuck there and to actually capture all that flavor and prevent burning. So after everything is thoroughly mixed to combine, I'm going to go in with my tomatoes, and I decided to keep all the liquid because I'm going to use that tomato liquid to deglaze the pan. If that liquid is not enough, you may need to add just a touch bit of bone broth in the bottom there just to make sure you can scrape up all the good bits. 
but ideally we're not going to add too much extra liquid because there's already quite a bit going in. And just make sure you're scraping the bottom of the pan. Um, if you're using a ceramic coated pot like I am, you do not want to use a metal spatula or else you're going to damage your coating. So a wooden spoon or spatula is kind of the ideal weapon of choice here. After everything is unstuck, we're going to go in with our pumpkin and pepper mix. And then likewise, we're just going to stir everything to combine. We're not looking to actually cook this on the stove top. This is all going to go into the oven and slow cook over a little while. So once you're stirring things together and everything looks well combined, you can throw the top on and then get that bad boy in the oven. We're going to go 275F for an hour and a half or 90 minutes total. Ninety minutes later, take your crock pot out of the oven and remove the lid and then we should still see quite a bit of liquid in there and that's to be expected. I'm going in with actually two squares of chocolate, I changed my mind, and then two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I doubled the chocolate just because I don't really think with how much stuff is in the pot that two squares is going to make a difference. And then we're going to drain our black beans, go in with those, and then we're going to go in with our kidney beans. We are not going to drain those because that bean water actually provides quite a bit of consistency to this and actually thickens things up quite a bit. And I, that's what I'm looking for. So once again, stir everything to combine, and then we're going to increase our oven temperature to 325F and go back in for 45 minutes. Once we're done, 45 minutes later, give things a taste to see how our seasoning is. You should expect things to be a little bland here because we haven't really seasoned anything. So go in with as much salt as you feel necessary. I threw in three big rips of salt along with another couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and a handful of brown sugar, I would call it, just to kind of balance out how much spice is there because those chipotles are quite spicy. Once again, give everything a mix to combine and then taste one more time. And that's pretty good. We're gonna start serving it up and you can kind of put whatever decorations you'd like on this. I'm going with some sour cream, a little bit of shredded cheddar, some sliced green onions, and then some sliced avocados. All right, cooking's done. I, from the end of cooking taste test where I adjusted seasonings a little bit, I can tell you off the bat, this thing is a little spicy. So if you don't like spice, keep that in mind. Um, let's just dig in, give it a good taste now that I've Added a few other things to it. Try to get a little bit of everything. Mmm. Yeah, that's... Oh, it's so good. You, you need to add that little bit of extra stuff right at the end. That little bit of brown sugar and salt went a long way because... I didn't flavor this, really. I didn't salt the turkey. I didn't salt the, the anything until the very end because sometimes through the cooking process, especially that last 45 minutes in the oven when you're kind of reducing the liquid, things can get salty and too salty really quick. So I wait until the end of the cooking process to adjust seasoning. And honestly, perfect. Absolutely perfect. I wouldn't change a thing if I tried. The macros are going to be great on this. I'll post them in the description below after I calculate them. Um, but yeah, 10 out of 10. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you don't mind leaving a like and subscribe, if there's something you would do differently or something you would like to see differently, let me know. Leave a comment. I'd appreciate hearing from you guys as well. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.